I, I, I agree 100%. I, I would wish that they have a, a version of WebKit where you can access the camera. That would be uh, really great if that was possible. And I, I guess that one day in the future uh, it will be possible. So here I have a quick uh, overview of uh, these controls in action. Um, where you see why it was important to send different content for the same application to different devices. Uh, so we have the iPad on one side, the iPhone, same application. So we created the demo, which is the model agency. So assume that we have a model agency and we have the luxury of selecting all these beautiful girls. And uh, then, then we, um, okay, we can uh, have a database of all these uh, models. And as you see, our user interface in the iPhone is different than in the iPad. In the iPhone, we have our list of models. If we click on a model, it will slide. And there, we will see the page with the details. Because it's simply impossible to have details and list on the same screen. It's simply too small. On the iPad, instead, nothing prevents us from having details and the list at the same time. That's why, okay, we have a different user interface for a different device. Um, so maybe um, let's just um, start this application so that you can see it in uh, real. So this is the application um, from the screenshot so that you um, don't think that I'm putting anything fake here on the screen. Okay, so I connected to my uh, server and this is uh, the actual application. Um, well, I don't believe that on the Android this will, it has not been fine-tuned or tested or anything for um, Android. So, okay, this is the static screen, but it gets interesting when we start to play with this. Um, as you can see here, we have this scrolling with inertia in our list control. You see? And we have this list with the scroller uh, that appears when the list scrolls, etc. So now I click on one model, and you see that on the uh, right side, the detail information is uh, updated instantly without any page refresh. So this is the async stuff that I was talking about. It's the async stuff that is doing this kind of thing. This here, this list is all uh, HTML. So um, we are not... We are in the browser, so we cannot use the uh, iPhone or iPad uh, list view control. Uh, here we have this uh, typical spinning wheel. Same thing with uh, inertia. Um, and so that gives you an ID. Uh, on the bottom, we have this uh, menu uh, where you see also this little, these red, uh, little red uh, balloons indicating that there are some new things, uh, for example. Um, so that gives you an idea or an impression uh, of um, what kind of applications that really look close to native applications on a device uh, like this from an intra-web uh, application. I see that the time is going really fast. Um, that's something I definitely wanted to uh, share or tell. Uh, that is that um, your mobile browser offers some additional convenient things to make the experience of using a mobile web application even nicer, meaning that you can add an icon on your uh, mobile phone desktop that with which you start your uh, mobile application. So it sits between all the native applications, like an icon, 
and you start it, immediately starts the browser uh, for this app. Um, so we have a non-visual component through which you can control the behavior uh, of uh, how this icon is added to your desktop. First of all, that means you can specify the icon that will be used on your desktop. So you can have your custom icon for your app. You can uh, define a splash screen. So um, if the device has downloaded this splash screen once, it can use it the next time. So to hide a little bit the startup time from the browser, you immediately see the splash screen. What it can do uh, additionally is you have properties where you control, okay, you're always using a browser, and you can control, okay, hide the status bar of the browser because the user does not have to see this is a web application, hide the address bar, run full screen in other words, so that it looks, behaves just like a native application. So we encapsulated that in one non-visual component that just exposes some settings, specify icons, specify hide the address bar, just some properties and you're up and running. Um, let's see an, uh, once more the effect of um, the asynchronous um, events and updates with an, uh, a demo of the iPhone menu control. So what we have here is, this is the non-visual component I talked about that instructs to run without address bar, etc. It's just a few properties uh, where you can configure all this uh, kind of stuff, the startup image, that's the splash screen, etc. And here we have our menu, so that's typically the menu that sits at the, at the bottom of um, mobile applications. And in this menu we can have these balloon, red balloon indicators that there is something new, etc. So let's run this application and see uh, what is happening? Okay. So here at the bottom of the screen, I have my uh, menu. If I remember well, if I press this button, you see that here a, a little red uh, balloon appeared. So this was asynchronously that this red balloon was added to this menu item in our menu bar at the bottom of the page. Here we have some uh, integration of um, mobile web application and the, the phone itself. It doesn't make sense on an iPad because it doesn't have a phone. Uh, let me see uh, what exactly it, okay. Here I pushed this button on the menu and it set a phone number in this phone label. So this phone label is a control we created, uh, meaning that if we press this um, label, it will start the phone calling this number. So if you would run this on your device and you press this button, it will call my iPhone uh, in my uh, device. Okay. The iPhone uh, list control, so the list that you have seen with uh, the models. Let's explore a little bit uh, what, how this list can be used. So here I have the page of the interweb app. I have the list control. And I have here, this is what is called the detail page. So it will allow us to see the details or edit the details of the information that is in the list. And here we have what we call the page flip um, component. The page flip component is the component that controls transitioning from our list to the details uh, page. Um, okay, let's see what happens because here is some interesting little thing that I can tell about this. But anyway, let's, let's start first. So you see the list. 
So it's just a list that I filled with some items. You can see the, the effect of the inertia again. So the faster I move, the faster it scrolls, etc. So what happens is I click on an item and have you seen the transitioning to the detail page? So here it shows in the edit control the text of this item. It's uh, item 41 in this case. So what I will do now is edit this um, edit control. So I set in the edit control IT DEFCON. Okay, so we are still here at the detail page. Now I'm clicking on the back button. Have you seen the transitioning back to the list? So it's the page flip control that controls this transitioning. And in the list, we have this item updated with the content that we set in the edit control. All this happened asynchronously. So there was an asynchronous event that um, happened when I clicked the button on the detail page. From there, there was an instruction asynchronously sent back to the web, to the browser, telling, okay, flip back and update the content of this specific item in the list with the data that I changed in the edit control. All this happened uh, asynchronously. Okay, I think given the time, I will skip this, but this was the part that goes about the spinner control. So the, typically the date picker in your iPhone or iPad, um, you have seen it in the, the, model, the model agency demo. And this was a, just a small demo that showed um, how, you can a, how you get asynchronous events as you spin the wheel of this uh, control or how you can asynchronously set the value of this uh, spinner. Some interesting control that I really wanted to show you today is the geolocation control, a component that allows you to retrieve the longitude, latitude uh, of the GPS in your mobile device. Can be interesting if you have employees, salespeople, whatever, or on the road and you want to see are they really working, are they really at the place where they are supposed to be or are they cheating and doing something different. Um, one important remark here is uh, privacy ruling. So uh, European regulations, blah, 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 uh, they uh, specify that uh, it's not allowed to retrieve the geolocation of a person without his consent. So you cannot, behind the back of someone, uh, find out where is he. So he always needs to approve. So also in this case, if uh, at the moment we instruct the component get the coordinates, we will get a prompt. Allow or not allow. Uh, there is no way around. If there would be a, a way around, that simply means that the European regulations is not followed and then Apple, Android and, and, and all the, the makers of devices that would allow a backdoor uh, will be uh, punished. Okay, so, uh, so far I'm not aware of a backdoor, so we will have to approve or disapprove uh, that it uh, captures our location. So in the demo I will show it's a non-visual component. Um, Let's open the demo. It's a non-visual component that communicates with the WebKit browser with some JavaScript. Um, it's non-visual and it's really non-visual because I do not find it on the... Where is my... Okay, here is the component, but you will not see it visibly uh, in the app. So when I click this button, it will ask from the geolocation control, capture longitude, latitude. And then it will show um, this longitude and latitude information in a label. So let's run this application and start it from this uh, browser. So here you see uh, 
when it's fresh started, I have this button to ask uh, the location. So let's, I push the button and you see the prompt. So it asks us if I really allow that my position here is captured. So for the demo, I say yes. And what you see here now is longitude and latitude information that it captured on the label. So we are on 45.39 and uh, I believe it's 2.11 and something. Now here I added another uh, control and it's, I think it should work on your devices as well so you can see how accurate your GPS is. Um, I added a label, a label also a special component, a label that uh, links up to the web um, the Google Maps app on this device, okay? So here I have this label, go to my place. So I click the label, Google Maps appears, and as you can see, it has um, shown that we are indeed where we think we are, okay? So this label is also something that takes advantage of things that are exposed in the WebKit browser engine to make this connection between your app and uh, Google Maps on the device. So, as the time is uh, getting shorter, we are uh, summarizing, giving a quick summary. Um, so, what we offer with these components is um, capabilities to hide away all these details from the JavaScript, the HTML, etc., etc., to create uh, mobile web applications that are, first of all, fine tuned for the use of bandwidth, for the speed, and that are also fine tuned to create a user interface that looks, uh, let's say, nearly identical to um, a native application that is installed on your phone. Um, and it allows you to use your Delphi skills. Um, so if, if you um, do not want to bother with all the JavaScript, etc., you can stay strictly in Delphi. Some useful links of information. Um, okay, so this presentation, you can download it from here, but I guess that from IT DEFCON, uh, there is some space on their website where you can download all presentations, I assume. Um, the components that you have seen in action here today in the demos, uh, this is the URL where you can find them. So these controls are specifically targeted at mobile web application development. Uh, we have way more than this for desktop uh, browser applications with interweb we have the entire studio that has heavier components like grids with all kinds of features etc this is where you can find um, this information finally something that i wanted to mention is um, intraweb courseware general information about intraweb um, the, let's say the standard documentation that comes with delphi is a little bit small or mostly non-existent, yeah, but uh, this can be a useful uh, source of information if you start out with the IntraWeb framework. So uh, that uh, is the end of the presentation. If you have any further questions, remarks, feedback, whatever, everything was clear or Okay, then I thank you for uh, your interest. Uh, I hope you had a nice uh, conference.